Hey, this is Andrew Reversa, aka Zircon, and I want to show you a little walkthrough of the title track from my latest album, Identity Sequence. And this is featuring Jillian Aversa, the same person, my wife, that collaborated with me on Just Hold On back in FL Studio version 9. So just to give you a quick overview of the project, I'm going to zoom out here. You can see that this is pretty complex. This is probably one of the most complex projects I have ever worked on. Um, it really pushed my computer to its limits, but I think it turned out very, very well. So just to play a little bit of it to refresh your memory if you haven't heard it yet. Okay, so I'm gonna stop it there, but that's the first verse of the song, and then a little bit of lead-in. So the way I have this organized, um, as you can see, generally speaking, I have the drums up top here, and the patterns are um, pretty standard for dance music. You can see I have a layer here going on with the kicks. And just to take a look at some of the processing there, also, uh, in terms of mixer tracks, I'm using quite a few. I'm actually using almost all the ones available right now and they all have tons of effects on them. But anyway, this layer here on the kick, um, on every track I, I have, I use uh, the parametric EQ2, PEQ, and I really like the spectrum view on this. Um, you know, I, I do everything by ear, of course, as well, but having the spectrum view is just nice to see uh, some of that energy where you don't necessarily hear it, but uh, you can see that it's taking up headroom. So just for example, taking off um, the EQs I have. I find that sound to be, you know, a little um, mid-range heavy, a little uh, nasal. And then I have some uh, compression here as well as uh, even additional saturation drive. And then I have some uh, transient shaping with guitar rig and the glue compressor. So take those off. So all of that helps to really, uh, you know, make the kick sound even, but with a lot of punch as well and a lot of transient sound. Um, I don't really normally believe in compressing every track like some uh, producers do to get loudness. I try to keep some air and dynamics, but for the kick and, and the snare as well, it's good to have that uh, extra processing. And I've talked about that in some of my other videos, but you may also see, there's a lot of side chaining going on here with the uh, Fruity Limiter. So I'm just gonna play like uh, just a short bit here. Actually, let's see this. Okay, so that by itself is not side-chained. You can hear the kick now is gonna start ducking things. The kick is routed to those channels uh, in the mixer, side-chained to this track. And then the free limiter is on most of these tracks with the proper input. Uh, what I've also done though for the pad, you'll notice that that's not side-chained yet. That's actually being side-chained over here by this uh, hidden channel. And see, this kick here is only going to the pad. It's not actually going to the master. So sometimes you want to have a side-chain effect, but you don't want to hear the kick. So by just turning off the uh, 
output to the master track, you can sidechain without actually hearing it. So um, that's sort of like the foundation for the song, the drums and the bass, of course. Uh, and then, you know, you've probably noticed there's a ton of automation going on, and that's all with uh, FL's automation clips, and it's used for different purposes. So for example, for the vocals, um, you know, I have quite a bit of DSing going on. Let's just take a look at the vocal chain real quick. Uh, let's see here. Is a born of dreams. So I have, of course, EQ on the voice, plenty of EQ, um, shaping it, making sure it's not too bassy and low end heavy, and then also various reverbs. I have a reverb send here, which is being EQ'd, and then additional processing and effects um, to really sculpt it exactly how I want. Some of these EQs are actually used for volume automation uh, alone, and they're not really impacting the sound much. But in this case, you can see that there's some automation on the voice, and that's just to take out some of the uh, sibilance. Some voices are bold. And it still has you know some of that S sound, but just for an example, without that, whoops. Without that, we would hear this. Some voices, some void. So it really helps to smooth and even out the vocal and helps it sound, you know, as polished as possible. Um, down here, these automation clips are actually used to even out the mix in a subtle way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play it with this for like a measure or two and then without it to hear the uh, the comparison. Okay, now I'm gonna take these off before I explain exactly what they do. I'm just gonna go ahead and mute all of them. There are quite a few. Let's go ahead and mute that. And all this. And this. And all that. Let's hear it again. You can hear there's a huge loss of clarity there. And so basically what I'm doing here is I'm automating specific bands uh, in EQs in the different parts. So for example, subtly taking out, you know, the mid range of a particular uh, synth sound or um, ducking the volume in general of an arpeggio. Let me see if I can find like a specific instrument to use as an example. So this is one that came down in this part. And those also would be uh, good examples of, you know, stuff being ducked out. So all of this EQ, it might seem excessive, but, you know, to me, for this album, Identity Sequence, I, you know, I've been working on it for so many years. I really wanted it to sound very polished, uh, you know, very professional, top notch. I do this all for my home studio. You know, this isn't going to Pro Tools. This isn't becoming, you know, um, a production with a, a whole lot of different people. It's basically just me. And um, on the master track, just for the, for the record, uh, this is my own mastering using the glue and then TLS pocket limiter, of course, with the uh, PEQ. Um, for the album release, I did have it mastered, just the stereo mix by an engineer, John Rod, who did a great job with it. Normally, I master everything myself, and it sounds good, but I felt like he was able to push it just a little bit more of the way because he has you know better monitors than I do. I'm actually mixing on headphones most of the time, so... Um, moving ahead a little bit in the song, you know, there's a, there's a great chorus, but also um, what I want to talk about is the breakdown section, which I think is pretty spectacular. So my, uh, my computer's having a little bit of trouble playing that back because I'm doing the video recording at the same time, but um, basically just kind of pattern by pattern, and there's this huge like glitchy thing going on. 
there's like a million layers of just different synths. Zebra, um, you can see all the channels here in, in clips. Zebra, Omnisphere, Massive, FM8, um, Contact Strings. And some of the automation here is actually what gives it that choppy feel. So rather than um, bouncing to wave, I'm actually doing this sort of the uh, the hard way is I'm, I'm automating the gain on the channel and then a plugin, uh, Sonalkeys' free G to just mute the channels. So for example, just playing this back. Now with the automation, So again, having that in there, even though it's it's very painstaking to do this, but uh, it really adds, I think, to the to the glitchiness of the breakdown without needing to bounce all the files first and then chop them up later. Because you know, I like to edit the parts you know constantly as I go. I was editing this up to you know a week before it uh, came out practically, so um, that's just the kind of the way I like to work. And then the breakdown continues, of course, uh, through to the second verse. <laughs> And some of the drum stuff going on, it's actually a mix of like, you know, there's some MIDI triggered grooves, some one shots, you know, I, I use the sequence here, the step sequencer very frequently, as you can see. Uh, there's some assorted, actually, that's not even doing anything. I don't know what that is. <laughs> And then everything is sort of syncopated there uh, before the second verse comes in. You can see, again, I'm ducking out some of these parts with the automation. And that little bit there, this is actually using Isotope Stutter Edit and Deep Blue Glitch, uh, I believe to do that effect. So without it, it would just be this. Of course, it sounds a lot better with the glitching. And before I play this next part, um, another trick that I do here with the with the automation clips, uh, as you can tell, I really like automation clips. Um, at the ends of phrases, I like to taper the vocal off using a little bit of, um, of course, automating the vocal down itself. So this is, I believe, the vocal curve here. So that's going down slightly. But then at the same time, I'm increasing the amount of delay. And then I'm also increasing the reverb, in this case, about how shimmer, the wet dry envelope. Um, so your the volume is going down, but then the sort of the wetness, the expansiveness of the vocal is going up. So you get this nice sort of like fading and dissolving. Anyway, uh, after that, there's the, uh, the sort of the big breakdown, which is my favorite part of the song. So with this, this is like just a huge amount of layering of different synths and very careful writing to make everything sound, you know, very full. Uh, for example, let's take a look at this. I think I muted these. So these are bass synths from earlier. Playing in octaves. Uh, then I have FM8. Then here are, I believe, the strings. There's a lot of like suspensions, very jazzy chords. You know, um, 
I, I enjoy those kinds of harmonies with a little bit of dissonance, a little bit of uh, flavor to them, as opposed to just simple major and minor. This really took a long time to write, believe me. Um, there's more. I think it's just like a phasey saw. Uh, and then here's an arpeggiated sort of 303 type sound, which I think, I, yeah, I made this in, uh, in Zebra. You can make that. So that's that pattern, um, but that's actually only a little bit of it. There's also the uh, big drum hits. And then... And all these little bits and pieces kind of assemble to create the final sound that you hear. And then in the second part, there's a additional wobble kind of synths going on. Let's see. When your projects get this complex, it can be difficult. Oh right, here's actually an example of the kick sidechain. This is a silent kick and it's sidechaining that enormous bass synth. And then there's this big build up before the uh, final chorus. And with that, uh, again, automation here, I like to use the uh, free filter just for a lot of those simple low pass and high pass effects. Uh, you hope you uh, will hear that in a lot of my songs. Um, and then for this, just so I don't have the filter on all the time, you know, I'm actually turning on the effect and then mixing it back down to zero. Same thing with the uh, deep blue glitch effect. And then of course, Zebra is being um, automated as well. This is kind of a cool arpeggio. <laughs> And then, you know, some of it is just extra effects, you know, audio clips. I actually had some additional stuff that I never used in the uh, final version of the song. It was like this. I thought that sounded cheesy, so I took that out. Um, as a general note, the, uh, the drums I use overall, uh, Big range of sources, but I use uh, Gold Baby drums. So, like, uh, let's see, not that browser. Just as an example, I have and these are all legitimate, um, legitimate samples. So, like the Urban Cookbook Volume One, really, really good stuff in here. I use Wave Alchemy for some of these drums. Uh, Vengeance Essential Club sounds a little bit. I think those are a bit overused, but sometimes they're good for layering. Um, some of my own sounds that I've uh, created just sort of mixed in throughout. Uh, here's some of the Gold Baby stuff. Lots of sort of old school things mixed in. And then also Stylus RMX, as well as just, you know, break beats that I have that I've uh, collected over the years. And then, uh, you know, for the finale of the song, this automation here is actually the, uh, the lead synth in the background. That's one of my favorite um, sounds actually from the from the whole song is just that lead synth. I think it sounds really good. that automation in the event editor it was recorded in by me just with the mod wheel on my keyboard to introduce vibrato of course um, you know pretty straightforward stuff from there and the ending of the song is sort of just uh, going back over some of the uh, instruments we've heard before but also with the drum beat Actually, I think it's, where does it start here I think
this is uh, mainly Omnisphere, that guitar sound, that I just felt that it was really, really a very evocative sound. And I think I also have other layers. Just to add that organic side of things, that's sort of what this album is about. You know, identity sequence as a song and as an album is about, you know, the electronic versus the organic, you know, synthetic versus human. So combining those two is just, you know, that's what I aim to do with my music. Uh, anyway, that is the song identity sequence. And obviously, you know, there are hundreds and hundreds of patterns, you know, uh, almost a hundred mixer tracks. I could talk about some of these things all day. Uh, but feel free to ask, you know, questions in the comments or, you know, post on my Facebook wall. It's facebook.com slash Zircon Music. Uh, always happy to share what I do. And you can see that, you know, of course, FL is all over this. FL plugins, you know, flanger, distortion, overdrive, EQ on everything. I absolutely could not have done it without these wonderful tools that uh, we all have now these days. So that's the technological side of things. Anyway, this is Zircon. Uh, you can pick up Identity Sequence right now on Bandcamp, iTunes, uh, my website, zirconmusic.com, or CD Baby. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and enjoy making music.